And I'll tell you when I'm ready to go. All right. So it just popped up. So we are live for show number 118. It's me and Miss um, Oksana. Oksana in the mic. Miss Oksana. <laughs> so she's going to be helping me. So uh, I'm going to have to go back and forth. But I didn't want to go two weeks in a row without, the, um, without doing the show. So, so here we are. Right? So... She'll be asking the questions tonight. The uh, other lovely young, young ladies were not able to make it tonight, but again, wanted to get this in for you guys. So I, I aim to service and please. So if I'm stumbling. If I am stumbling. <laughs> it's cool. So go ahead and hit enter over there. Okay. Uh, just yeah, just just yeah, do the search. All right, so there we are live right there. Okay, got it. So, so click on yeah, click on the link above. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hit, hit right mute, there. hit mute right there. Got it. Click on it. All right, They're so the questions right, right there. there. So boom, then on Facebook, go back over here. All right, and if you will, he'll post it in there. Uh, uh, Tori normal posters in there, so just okay. refresh. Hit the refresh right here, and it should come up. Yeah, scroll up, scroll down. I mean, okay, there it is. Okay, so, see it. Yeah, so to uh, look at the uh, questions, questions comments, that pop up. you can just click on it and open it all the way up. Click on the actual image. Just, just bear with me, guys. So boom, so we, um, we're in here. So um, again, welcome aboard everyone for this week's uh, show. Uh, myself and Oksana, Oksana is here to, uh, to provide this, this service of answering your questions um, about the biz. So with no further ado, hold on a sec, you want to introduce yourself? Oxy. Yeah, my name is Oksana. How are you guys doing? I'll be helping Ty tonight. So bear with us. What's up? You want to introduce yourself? Because I know nothing. I'm just trying to help. <laughs> That's what's up. All right. So um, so we're gonna go through our normal stuff here. Just give me another second. But while we're getting things together, I text you that link if you want to send it, you know. Okay. Oh, you got it. Okay, so um while we're putting things together here. I want to remind you guys, a lot of you guys have gotten text messages, emails. You've seen the uh, post on, um, you've seen the post on Instagram about the uh, free masterclass that um, I'm offering. You know, if you haven't signed up for it, definitely sign up for it. Um, I'm going to put an image of it up here. right now while we get ready to rock and roll. Are you ready to start to ask questions? I'm ready. Miss Oxana. I'm ready, I'm gonna do the best I can. Okay, get a little closer to the mic. Okay. Right. Can you hear me better? I can hear you better. So really really quick before you start, again, um, on the screen I have the, uh, the option where you can uh, check out the free master class. I have a link in the description section of this video when this um, replay ends. Uh, but you can go to flipmasterclass.com to sign up. That's flipmasterclass.com. How to wholesale three to five houses per month. Um, on Instagram, just can click the link in the uh, bio of my page. Um, and again, it's um, how to wholesale three to five houses per month. Or you can just text me 205-492-3425 and I'll send you the link. So with no further ado, let's let's get this baby on the road. You ready? Yes, I'm yeah. ready. Good. Question, please. You got any? Doesn't look like it. I'm hope. Uh, yeah, scroll. You have to keep scrolling up and down because it'll keep refreshing. Okay, so here's a question. Here's a question on YouTube. 
Um, does your contract work in De Delaware or Maryland? Yes, uh, the contract works in Delaware, Maryland. Um, I did a recent video on wholesaling in Illinois and the legalities of it right now. And about 26 minutes and 55 seconds in, the attorney that I was interviewing, he went over the contract questions about what contracts you should use. And he made it clear that you can literally write up a contract on a, uh, a seller's kitchen table. So yeah, my contract will work there, but go back and watch that actual video. I think it'll be very insightful for those that question that do you have to have a specific contract for this state or that state or whatever. And you'll see uh, that, you know, you're overthinking that the contract is the easy part, especially when you start talking about wholesaling. Okay, so the question is not, um, there's more to the question. Okay. This is a question on YouTube from Julian Chavez. And he says, let's say I put a house on the contract after 30 days. Does it auto void? Meaning that if the contract, uh, at the expiration date of the, con it, the contract expires? Well, yeah, it, uh, technically yes, once your time, yeah, once your time is up, yeah, it just automatically voids now. If you're, uh, if the seller's owed earnest money, then, you know, you have to pony up on that to answer the, the question in full. Okay. So most of your questions are going to probably come from, um, from YouTube. So just roll with them, you know, in between me, um, uh, answering the question, you can look on the other platform to see if you see anything, but. Okay. Here's, here's a question from somebody on YouTube. Um, it says, so on YouTube, I answer, hold, hold, hold your mic. Your, uh, um, here's a question from somebody on YouTube. Um, uh, on Instagram. I'm sorry. I'm on Instagram. I'm sorry. Um, Soul Collector 816 asks, I am trying to download my list from Dilulator onto my desktop. However, when I attempted to do so, the information had no format. I have researched Google Docs and it looks like it looks like that. Oh, he, he put a picture of it. Uh, he says it looks like that vowel. Oh, um, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure what you're doing on that. Um, you may want to just contact support with um, uh, PropStream uh, Monday through Friday, eight a.m. to five a.m. Um, uh, Pacific time, Standard Time. So. I'm not sure what, what you have going on. That's a technical question that I, I probably can't answer for you. Okay, so, so here's another question on YouTube. Amita H asks, condemned apartment building in hot market, but owner is an international LLC. Tried making contact with agent that's authorized under LLC, but they won't answer the phone. The agent authorized is an attorney. I guess I'm not sure what they're asking. Okay. Um, well, if you, if you made an attempt to reach out to them, you're not getting a response. There's really nothing you can do, but maybe try to follow up, you know, a couple of months later um, on it uh, through the attorney. You know, they're an international uh, owner. You know, who knows why they're just letting it sit in there. Sometimes people do it just for the, um, the tax break that they receive by letting it sit there in some sense. So um, the de depreciation of it. So, uh, but you never know what the situation. Some people just have more money than than cents, you know. Um, if that's not an oxymoron, <laughs> but yeah. So there's a question, another question on YouTube that sounds like it's a pretty good question uh -huh. to ask. Uh -huh. Brandy Gunn asks, "I'm wholesaling four separate properties that are a package deal from from the seller. Do I need to create four separate vans contracts for each property, or can I put all four of them on the same contract?" Okay, so she wants to know does she um have to do four separate contract? Um yeah, if it's so if it's four separate properties, I would recommend that you do four separate contracts um because you may have four separate buyer, buyers or multiple buyers or whatever. So uh even if you had one buyer, you could still, you know, the one buyer would sign all of the contracts and you know just close on them all whatever time frame you all agreed upon. So just to answer your question, you want to um to have four separate contracts and is what I would recommend with that small of a number. What else you got? 
Okay, so here's a question off Instagram. How do I fill out both? How do I fill out both purchase and sell agreement and assignment of contract? And if that the two, um, the only two contracts we, are those the two, con the only two contracts we need to wholesale. Well, there are a lot of ways to do it. Um, the way I teach it, and if you watch enough of my content, is that you have a purchase and sale agreement for the seller. You have a purchase and sale agreement for the buyer. The contract with the seller um, is going, uh, well, the contract with the buyer is going to be more than the contract with the seller. The difference between the two contracts or is normally your fee. Now, using an assignment agreement, that's up to you, but that's not how I do it. So watch my stuff. You have to follow how I do it. So both work. I'm just telling you how I put it together. Okay, so here's a question from Jay Miles on Facebook. He asks, if the seller owes a mortgage on the property, when does that get paid? I believe it gets paid during the closing, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, you are 100% correct. Uh, what was his name, Jay what? Jay Miles. J. Miles. Yeah. Uh, all liens, unpaid taxes, unpaid mortgages, they all get settled at the closing table. So the title company and or attorney to whoever's handling the closing will disperse those payoffs to the proper entities or lien holders or whatever. So. Okay. Um, here's another question. Um, From where? Instagram. Okay. Um, Acumen Investments asks, What's your view on wholesaling sector if market crashes like 2007, 2008? Well, being that I uh, went through it before now, you have to understand that the, the so-called crash, well, it wasn't so it was actual crash. It was totally real estate related. You know, what happens in the future now may not be real estate related. It may come from another industry. So it's really hard to say that. Um, the subprime lending market is what crashed the uh, real estate market before. And so wholesaling was affected. Um, you know, but for me personally, I didn't know enough about the business to know how to transition over because at the end of the day, houses were still being bought and sold. Cause you no know, people is shelter and it's not free. I don't care what's happening. So you just, you just, you transition on what's happening at that point or whatever. But again, at that time, I didn't know enough because all I knew when I got started, I was making more money than I made the year before. So now I'm, I'm a little bit more savvy and know that something is possible. Not mean it's going to happen anytime soon or whatever, but I'm a little bit more, well, a lot more savvy and I, I know how to transition into other things, but I have to know what's actually happening before I can diagnose that. You know, if it was similar to what happened before, I would probably go into more lease options at that point, you know, for, for a short time frame, even though I really don't like those, but you know, there's, a, there'll probably be opportunities there. Cause again, at the end of the day, people's transactions are still happening because shelter, AKA houses <laughs> are not free. Okay. So here's a question on YouTube. Martha Delgado, a realtor asks as a realtor, how do I do wholesaling? Interesting question. Uh, as a uh, realtor, you just have to just identify you, you are a realtor, you know, and proceed on. Now, depending on your relationship with your broker, some of them be, um, you know, a-holes about it or whatever. But at the end of the day, they can't prevent you from doing your own personal uh, investing or whatever at the end of the day. So, um, but you just have to just make the uh, seller or uh, parties that you deal with that you're, you're a licensed agent. Other than that, you proceed on as, as normal. Okay, here's a question on Instagram. Mr. Jesus Canales asks, um, what are the best lists I should pull and stack? And what sources are you using for the data? I'm not sure what, what that means, but. Well, I'd use Deulator, AKA PropStream to, um, if you do a search uh, on my channel, I'm sorry, on, yeah, on YouTube for Deulator, it's going to pull up all those videos. Or if you go to deulated.com, which is AKA PropStream, um, I have a number of videos to show you how to build lists. So um, I would do it now, but, uh, you know, but I have videos on that. Like, I think the last uh, flipping our show 117, I have an example where I used it there. So you can go back and watch show 117. Here's the question. Um, on YouTube, 
Mr. Frost Snow asks, I'm assuming it's Mr. I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, what type of banded signs do you recommend, more professional or more tacky? Well, um, I'll actually pull up a picture of uh, what I use right now, if you give me just a, a moment. Um, I'm going to always side on doing something, but you know, I've been doing these banded signs for a long time. And so, um, I think I have a, a good, um, uh, a good idea on uh, what actually works or not. So, uh, I'm gonna try to pull up sign here. Uh, let me see when I do this. Uh, that's oh, I spelled it right, right there. Okay, so um, here's an example of um, you know how I roll or whatever. Uh, good way for me to promote Digulated.com also, which that's not on not on my actual signs, but you, you tell me with those signs there get you know individuals' attention. Um, those are eighteen by twenty four portrait, two two color. You know, you don't have to do two color. They can be one color, which I'll show you an example of those or whatever. But um, um, uh, you tell me, <laughs> well, it's all about visibility. You know, you can get try to get cute or whatever. Just understand people are in traffic. I mean, they, they're not looking for your message. So it needs to be clear and as, as clear as possible and, and readable from a distance. Or whatever. So I gave you two examples there. So I'll let you answer your own question on that. Okay, so question on Facebook from the same gentleman that had asked the question earlier, Jay Miles, he's asking in lamest terms, can you explain lease options? I had a, a lead call of my bandit signs, but he asked if I was willing to do lease options. Um, why would someone call? Oh, you mean, uh, was somebody trying to buy one of his properties? Is what he's saying? No, this just says in lamest terms, can you explain lease option? Well, a lease option is, is another way of term is rent to own. Uh, that's, I think that explains it better than anything. It's a rent to own. Now, as far as you, as they're on the investor side of it, um, two ways to go, you know, a couple of ways to go about it. You can do a lease with an option to buy. You put a tenant in there, they give you a down payment. And they may give you a few hundred dollars over the amount that you agreed to with the seller. And then you'll have an ending price and you get the difference of that, maybe a year, two years, whatever. Uh, the other thing is you can set up the term and wholesale it to another investor, you know, or the tenant that wants to get in there and you're out of it. So, um, but in a nutshell, it's a rent your own deal that either you structure to stay in it or you structure to be out of it, but you get paid uh, on the front end, either the cash flow and in the back end or just on the front end through a fee, down payment or whatever, and you're out of it, and you turn it over to a tenant buyer or another investor. Does that make okay. sense? Makes sense to me. Okay. Here's a question off of Instagram. Um, Biological Son asks, just got my first signed contract and have been advertising on Craigslist. Should I be wary of investors asking for the address and how many days left on the contract? Um, well, you know, those are legitimate questions. The days on the contract is probably not as important, but they're going to have to have the address to be able to evaluate the property. Really no way around that. Okay. Question um, off Instagram as well. Amat Apparel asks, what is the exact verbiage you use to get the seller to sign without telling them it's an assignment contract? It's not an assignment contract. It's a purchase and sales agreement. So there's no verbiage needed. The contract is a purchase and sales agreement. You're not, they're not signing a con an assignment contract. Don't get confused with that, my man. Um, just Google, I'm sorry, do a YouTube search for contracts and flip man. And I have tons of videos to explain. Okay, Tico Blaine um, of YouTube asks, cash buyer agreed on the price. I'm assigning the contract. Do you send the cash buyer an assignment contract as well? 
of, of your of your contract with the seller? Can you walk us through the, that process? Well, guys, I know you're watching a lot of different people out here, um, and um, that that can make this stuff confusing. Um, the, <laughs> uh, God, I use two purchase and sales agreements, right? One for the seller, one for the buyer. No assignment contract. The difference between the two contracts is how I get paid through an assignment fee, but no assignment contract is used. Um, if I understood the question correctly, when you start to mix the way I do it with what you've probably heard others do it, which both work, I'm just telling you how I do it. Now, if you're going to use an assignment contract with a uh, buyer, then, yeah, you're going to have to send the assignment contract over with the buyer on the fee that you all agreed upon. And then all that information is submitted to whatever title company and or closing attorney. I'm assuming I answered the question. I thought of, um, who was it? What was it then? It was. It's, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. All right. Um, but I, I hopefully I answered it. But uh, yeah, if you're going to follow the way I do it, watch the videos on contracts. You need to watch all of them in reality. Uh, and it may take you three months to do that. But as I say a lot, it takes a doctor, what, eight, how long, 12, eight to 12 years to become a physician, something like that. Take three months out, study these free videos, and you can make as much and more money than they make. And they paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to become a physician. They're in that much student loan debt and you getting the information for free that could change your financial situation forever. I know most people want to bits, bits and put it together, bits and pieces. And then you get out there and say, oh, this stuff doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. No, it does work. You didn't equip yourself with the, by educating yourself to give yourself the best chance to succeed because you want, and, and I understand people may be under pressure, you got bills to pay and all this stuff. I get it. But I'm just telling you, if you have got to have, you got to have patience in real estate anyway. If you can't, if you don't have the patience to go through this information and educate yourself, go ahead and do something else. Cause you have to have a lot of patience in real estate anyway. I'm just telling you. So that's my soapbox, soapbox number one for the night. <laughs> so, uh, but don't watch my stuff. I ain't, I'm not telling you not to educate yourself, whatever source you have, but I'm letting you know you can get very confused in this business if you're watching my stuff and other people's stuff. I know I give it all away. I don't know what they're doing. I'm giving you everything you need to know away through my channel for free. Now you're dealing directly with me, that, that may cost you, but on this channel, it's all free. On top of that, we have this show every week, mostly every week, and, and then I answer questions in the comment sections of any of my videos. If you post a question, I'm going to answer the question or I'm going to lead you to a video that will answer the question in detail. All right. But um, I don't know if I answer this question or not. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, hopefully I answer the question, uh, young man, I'm assuming. Okay. Commerce, 1974. Commerce 1974. Um, ask, this is off YouTube. How should I respond if a if a potential motivated seller asks me how can I prove I'm legitimate, especially if I'm a newbie with zero to new to few deals? Ooh, that's a good one. I like that question. Um she said, How do I prove to a seller that I'm a legitimate? Yes. Like like you sound like you got $10 million in the bank and you don't care if they do it or don't. And you shouldn't. That that's how you either they're going to do it your way. This is the mindset you got to have. And I hope I'm answering this question. I got $10 million in the bank. Even if I only got $1 in the bank and, and I do not care if they do it or not, either they're going to do it my way or not. Now you're going to be nice to people and cordial because that's where you should be anyway, but that's the attitude you have to go. So don't worry about, whether they think you're, and they start asking those type of questions, like how many deals you've done, all this stuff, you know, you're wasting your time anyway. Motivated sellers don't talk like that. Clowns talk like that. You're going to always have unreasonable people. I don't care what type of business that you're in, that you'll get on the phone. You just move on. Don't waste your time. They make it easier for you and yourself 
not to waste even any time with them. You know, if they, if they, if they start to go down that road, how many deals you've done, or you register with the Better Business Bureau? No, I'm not. For what? <laughs> I buy houses. What for what? Anyway. Okay, good. I, I like that answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> I hope it is. <laughs> what you got? Okay, Jay Miles asks. Jay Miles. That's Again, on too. Facebook. Jay Miles on Facebook. He's very active oh, today. Okay. All right, that's what. Do I'm you offer a out. monthly subscription for Dilulator? Yeah. I to like that you can access the seller's info. Yeah, go to his website. It's a one-stop shop, he says. Yeah. Oh, he oh, he oh, he's letting everybody else know. Oh, he's asking he's asking questions. He's letting everybody else. Know. Well, the first one was a question. Do you? Yeah, offer yeah. Just go to dla.com. Five-day free trial with a monthly subscription. Yes, very powerful tool. Not going to do deals for you. It's it's the paint and the bucket, but the wall is not going to paint itself. Got it. All right. You can watch push-ups all day. I got this from Gary D, but. You're not gonna lose one pound unless you get out there or get any results from it, unless you start doing push ups yourself. So, boom. Hope that makes sense. Okay, off of Instagram, Mel Buys Houses asks Have you ever had to wholesale a property where the house didn't even show up on Zillow and has less square footage than all the others around it? How to figure comps for that? When you say less square, well, have you ever wholesale houses that are not on Zillow? I'm really not sure what you mean on that because that's possible. Sometimes the address is tricky. The county may have it registered as one thing and the owner thinks it's another. That that happens or whatever. But if the square footage is less, you mean how much less? Because you will have situations where the normal house in a particular neighborhood may be 1,200 square feet, 12 to 1,400 square feet or uh, whatever. But the house that you're evaluating may be 2,500 square feet. So a lot of times you can't pull down on properties like that because it's so out of whack or the normal house may be 2,500 square feet, but the house you're looking at is 1,200 square feet. And you may not be able to pull any doubt on that because it's out of whack or whatever. So you have to just keep that in mind. So if that's the case, you take the house, take one of the houses, the next door across the street, that is the normal house and use that to evaluate your property. I'm going to buy based on that if it's a, if the uh, if the house that I'm looking at is a lot larger, I'm not going to buy it based on that if it's in a neighborhood where, um, well, it's going to depend on the neighborhood. Uh, but a lot of times you're still not going to be able to get the price that you're looking for when it's that out of whack. It's almost double the size of another house or it's uh, half the size of another house. So, but to answer your question, that is possible. You just have to dig into it a little deeper. Hopefully I answered that question. for you. YouTube question. Um, Danny F asked, can we wholesale houses with a mortgage on it? Um, because my attorney said I can't assign bank owned properties. Do we just refer the property to our agent we work with? What was his name? Um, Dan Danny F. D-A-N-N-Y and then F, I guess called the last name or whatever. Okay, I see it here. Can we wholesale with a mortgage on it? Okay, there it is. All right. Um, can we wholesale property to the market? Well, yeah, you can wholesale a house that has a mortgage on it, but a property that's bank owned, that's not the same thing. A property that's bank owned, that, that means it's been foreclosed on and the bank now owns it. And there's no mortgage on it. The lender owns it. So wholesaling a, an REO is what it's called, real estate owned, uh, is more difficult for a number of reasons. So, but to answer the question about can you wholesale a house with a mortgage on it? Yes, you can. If the, you know, it's just a regular house, someone owns it, they still, you know, just have a mortgage on it. So as long as the balance of the mortgage is less than the price that you need to make the deal work and the, you and the seller agree upon it, as I mentioned before from Jay Miles, I think on Facebook, is that all, all, all unpaid taxes, mortgages, the liens will be paid off at closing, you know? So yes, but the REO thing, that's something different. A bank owned property is something different. It doesn't have to be free and clear to wholesale. Is also he asked that question also. Okay, Boo Man seventy four hundred asks, Have you ever used PropStream to find sellers? Go to deal you later and find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it's for. Yeah, well, I, when he says find sellers, I guess he means the skip tracing part of it. I, I assume. Okay, um, I, I've used it before. Uh, others have used it more. I now as much as I promote deal lady create PropStream. 
Uh, now, the skip trace, there's some better skip tracing options out there the last time I checked or whatever, which I'm on it every day, but I never use the skip tracing part of it. So, um, but I have had I've people that, that like it. So it's just going to depend. Uh, on you know what you use because there's so many options out there for quote unquote skip tracing. So just test it out and see if it works for you. Okay, Kim Pendleton of YouTube asks, what is the best way to retrieve a motivated seller phone number? Well, I use this service called um, I use Mojo MojoSales.com. And I also use um, uh, Lead Sherpa, uh, so both of those. So you can just YouTube both, search both of those, and then you'll you'll find more information about those services. What was her name? Kim what? Kim Pendleton. P E N D. What up, Kim Pendleton? Carissa Wells of YouTube asks, "Who does the earnest money go to? The title company or the seller?" Um. It's supposed it's supposed to go to the title company, right? But it may be a situation where you you may not have a title company picked out or whatever, which is fine. You can still you can still um um just pick one. Just just let them know you about to purchase the property. Just give them the purchase and sales agreement. Don't go into that you wholesale and that because the buyer may not want to use them. So if that's if that's the situation, then it may be held with them. You may have to get them to to uh, transition the the uh, the, the, the contract slash earnest money over to whoever you're going to actually close with. But normally it needs to go to a title company or attorney. So. Instagram question. FBL fella asks, just making sure we, that we can use the purchase and sell agreement in Kansas city. Um, I'm in the steps of getting multiple sellers on the contract. Haven't called because I need a confirmation. Say that again. Read that one again. Um, he's just trying to make sure, I guess, if he can use the purchase and sell agreement in Kansas City. Can he use my contract in Kansas City? The That's... purchase and sell agreement. Of yeah. course. Yes. Yeah, I don't see why not. You'd be able to. Yes, oh, definitely. Um, okay, so here is another question. Janet Ross asks. Um, she says, hi, Ty, I asked this earlier this week. What form of payment do you give to the seller? Check, cash, or earnest money? Well, I sort of just asked, are you going to give the attorney or title company check or earnest money? So, I mean, earnest money, a check, or, you, or money, or if you want to, I guess. But that's going to go to a title company or attorney. Okay. Rodney W. Of, of YouTube asks, do you feel pursuing properties with code violations are viable, viable prospect? And if so, how do I get a list of them? What does he mean? I'm, I'm not sure what he means by code violation. Well, uh, you'll have uh, houses that um, the city has deemed as, you know, uh, they they don't meet certain codes. It may be they okay. half burnt and they're just sitting there, or it may be the grass hadn't been cut in years. It, okay. it can be just simple stuff like that it can be on the code violations list. So, and then they're going to be titled different things in different municipalities. So you just have to call the city and see if that information is, um, is public information. What was the name of who, just, who asked that question? You remember? Um, yes, it was, um, Rodney W, a YouTube question. Okay, all right, I got to see him here. The reason I ask, I'm, I'm putting these questions in the um, description of the of the video for later. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so Marbo 4.0 asks another YouTube question. What do you have to do, if anything, to wholesale houses in another state. I'm assuming if he is in one state. Yeah, virtual whole. It's called yeah. virtual wholesaling. Um, nothing. <laughs> you gotta have um to have a great deal and have a cash buyer ready to to buy that great deal. Now it's it's more difficult because you need someone on the ground there in most cases representing your interest, whether it's another wholesaler, someone you know, maybe even a real estate agent, but you know, you need someone there on the ground to represent your interest in some form or fashion. Okay, so 
Here's a question of Instagram. Uh, prolific Real Estate asks, as a one-man show, will it be difficult, difficult to do deals consistently in a competitive market? Also, also what states are you doing deals in? Um, no, it's, you know, no, it's not going to be difficult at all to just do things yourself. You don't, you don't need a partner for this business at all. Um, now you may grow into needing help with things and, uh, whatever, depending on what your organizational skills are like, uh, whatever, but definitely starting out, you don't need a partner. Um, as far as what States I'm doing deals in on the uh, residential side, I get people to send me deals, you know, from all over so in, in reality, um, commercial also, which I do a, quite a bit of marketing to try to attract uh, commercial deals. So um, just all over in reality. I like, yes. to, I like to do more than what I'm doing for sure. I was trying to go back. There's a guy that was asking um, the question about the code violation. He still wanted to know if, like, ba he said basically that you didn't answer the question and he wanted to know whether you think they're good prospects. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Plus sorry. Code violation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, well, it's, uh, I answered how do you find them, but whatever. Uh, yeah. You uh, think, thanks for, uh, yeah. Well, you have to look at it, man, is that those may be opportunities that someone is motivated if it appears they don't care about the property. So I don't care what someone's level of motivation is. Um, yeah. So it's just another niche of people that, may be possibly more motivated than another group of people. So most definitely, yes, it, it's a, it's a niche. It just, I wouldn't just focus on those. It's just another, another avenue to possibly generate leads of, of people that may be motivated to sell a property treat a uh, cheap. So where do you get the lists? Again, from the city. Um, you have to find out. Is, is that a special list? That the um, it has? just depends on the municipality. All cities are not going to do that the same. Some of them, it may be public. Some, it may not be public. You have to call and find out. Okay. Sounds about right. Um, there is one more question down here. You guys can bear with me one more second. Um, Would you work with with a house that has termites? Yeah, of course. It just, just I guess anything you can wholesale. Yeah, it just uh, that's a repair cost, so it just has to justify. It just part of the repair cost, just like if windows need to replace heating, heating and air, roof. You know what it costs to to um, to, ter to to remove termites and termite proof the property. So it's just another cost. Okay. Um, Here's an what, what 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 name was that? Do you know? That was no. That just keeps going right now. So I can't okay, see that's it. Cool. It's that's gone. Cool. Um, Boo Man seventy four hundred asks of of Instagram, what is the um what are the best houses to wholesale? Vacant foreclosures or pre foreclosures? <laughs> Um, it's it, whatever is the deal, man. Um, you know, pre foreclosures is, is one animal in itself, depends on how much equity is there available, depending on what they owe or whatever in the situation. Um, if you have to go through a short sale process, that's that's hard to pull off. If it's a property that's actually been foreclosed on, I mean, the bank is actually taking it back, those are very difficult to wholesale through the normal process. You know, I'm sure some people out there figured out, but you got to have the right type of buyer. For that so i guess to answer the question just but a pre-foreclosure could be vacant uh foreclosure is going to be vacant, vacant in most cases so um so you're talking about a vacant that's not a pre-foreclosure or not a foreclosure then i'm going to say a vacant property if the numbers will work still boils down to the numbers will work okay question of facebook um i put my personal cell on my bandit sign should I? Uh, but no, I'm scared <laughs> to put them out. What should I do? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that answered it right there. <laughs> uh, Vumber.com, man. Uh, there are other services out there, but I use Vumber.com. That's V as in Victor, U-M-B-E-R. Before you answer the next question, let me make sure I 
hit them up with this again if guys if you haven't received a text and or email on um the uh free master class on wholesaling um wholesaling uh how to wholesale 35 houses per month you can access the free master class uh in the link after this video is over or you can go to instagram and tap tap the link in my video i mean in my profile i'll go to flip masterclass.com flip masterclass.com i think you will like what we put together got some cats that reached out to me uh amazing on how simple they made it, it was a little lot quite a bit of work put into it but i didn't have to do uh the editing part of it which is what i keeps me from doing more videos or whatever so but anything i think we put together a good product that you guys will find useful along with the free videos i have here so uh, go to uh, flipmasterclass.com or you can click the link in my bio on Instagram. That's Ask Flipman. You can go there. Uh, it should be on my Facebook page, Flipman, and also in the Facebook group, uh, Wholesale Real Estate with Flipman. And then again, after this video is over, I'll post it uh, there. So I, I guess I can do it now, but um, we can go to the next question. Sammy Compare, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce your name correctly. This is a question of Facebook. What will you be discussing in your master class? Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll, I'll tell them it's uh, how to find deals, um, how to find cash buyers, and knowing what's a deal. Those are going to be the those are the main components of it. How to you know find motivated sellers, knowing what's a deal, how to find cash buyers for the deal. Okay. You know those those are three. Um, Basically, what we did, we asked people, you know, what, what, what's holding them back? You know, what, what would they want? Those are the, those are the three most common things. Okay. And I'm posting the uh, link in the uh, chat here on 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 um on uh, YouTube right now. I think I'm spelling that right. Okay. Um, one precious or one asks, I guess. The, uh, what were the sites again that you used to find owners' phone numbers? Oh, um, I'll, who who asked that on where? One precious O one on Instagram. Oh, uh, Mojo Sales dot com, M O J O S E L L S dot com, and um, Lead Sherper. Uh, e let me see, L E A D S A T R P A. Whatever I could be a spelling bee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't either, so. Okay. Um, D Profit 24 says, I have heard that in Ohio you can't flip uh, flip a contract. And okay. two of my three of my best students are in Ohio. And not true. <laughs> it's it's okay. Have you heard of any difficulties wholesaling in Ohio? And okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. No. So don't know who you're listening to. Stop listening to them. Okay. Looking for more questions, you guys. Here we go. Um, biological son. From where? From um, this is an Instagram question. How can I value land? been receiving have been receiving leads in philadelphia on on lots but i don't know how to calculate the value well the easy thing you do if there's not a lot of development in an area so there's not going to be a lot of uh like properties you can um compare to then the easiest thing to do with land is to use the assessed value that the county provides and uh, the, that the county provides, and I would probably try to get it at twenty to thirty percent of that of that value. That's what I would do. Okay, here's a question from Shashgo. Um, this is a YouTube question. If you do two, I guess purchase and sell contracts, don't you have to close on one before you can do another purchase and sell on the same property? Say that again. If you do two purchase and sell contracts, don't you have to close on one before you can do 
another purchase and sell on the same property? Wait a minute. I don't understand the question. Read it one more time. If you do two purchase and sell contracts, okay? Yeah. Don't you have to close on one before you can do another purchase and sell on the same property? I guess. Oh, no, no. You have two purchase and sell contracts on one property? Uh, no, no, no. Um, that, if I'm understanding the question correctly, um, the per you, you're on, if it's a, sell, a contract with the seller, contract with your buyer, you're going to close on it. Just close on it. They pay you an assignment fee. Just one closing. You could double close it, but I'm, we're talking about assignment, so that would be two transactions if you double close it. Okay. Question, YouTube question, IG asks, um, what's your best line response to a seller calling you back from a bulk mass marketing campaign and you want to personalize it from, um, from the start, like you only mailed them, but you don't know the address. Say that again. Read, read the one's point. What's your your best line response to a seller calling you back from a bulk mass marketing campaign, and you want to personalize it from the start, like you only mailed them, but you don't know the address. No, you have to just you just be transparent with them. Yeah, you can't. There's no way to do that. You have, you have to be just transparent with them. Um, that hey, you know, we send out mailers to a lot of people in that area. We're gonna looking to buy two or three houses this month. Um, are you interested? Do you have a property you're interested in selling? You know, or, or what property are you interested in selling? You know, just just let them know what you want. Just just talk to them just like a regular human being. You know, because either they're gonna want to do it your way or they're not. You know, so. All Things Vaughn on YouTube asks, um, okay, why did it go black on YouTube? Oh, just refresh, hit the circle up there. Let me okay. Yeah. Like, I think we are, let me see. Yeah, I'm still. Oh, we're just going to read the question. Okay, so I can, I guess I can read a question of another. I'm still up, let me see. I can read a question. I, I got him over here. Let me see. I might can find something. Okay. Jay Miles, again, <laughs> on, in, on um, Facebook asks, can you speak to some examples of things that you're looking for when you're checking a home for repairs? I watched your video that you did five years ago, but it really wasn't clear. Um, when you're looking for repairs? Yes. Well, um, I guess the main things you check for, like if you go into a house. Um, well, you're obviously going to look at flooring, uh, the kitchens, um, whether the house needs to be painted, exterior, interior, heating and air, roofs, windows, um, all of that. The easy thing to do, man, is if the house is if the house is the house, if the house is livable, uh, twenty five dollars a square foot. If it's not livable, forty dollars a square foot. Now, if it's in a rental area, you might can get away with fifteen dollars a square foot. If it's livable, then twenty five dollars a square foot is not livable. You know, so um, that's generally speaking, you know, just the best way to try to just come up with a ballpark number. Now, if you want to just get deeper with that, get a couple of contractors to go out with you and walk through a few houses, make great notes, and you'll know what windows cost. You know, based on you know what most stuff is based on square footage, what flooring would cost. And then the type of neighborhood would matter whether it's a rental, it's a C, a D, a B, a, a A neighborhood. You know, the prices will go up because you're going to use different materials for, for those type of properties. But generally speaking, and hopefully I'm answering your question, just try to use $25 a square foot if it's livable, $40 a square foot if it's not livable. And just understand that, that you have to be flexible with that. You just need a ballpark number to work with to throw into your formula. Okay, so here's another question relating to repairs, but this one is of Instagram. Um, house buying and investing underscore 317 asks, when it comes to repairs, being a newbie, what is the best way to calculate the cost of repairs that would be needed? I just, I just answered it. Okay. Yeah, I just okay. answered it. I guess I was not listening. Yeah, I was just, just, just repairs. I, I, I the best to uh, answer um, repa repairs. Figure repairs is basically what he was asking. Do what? 
he was asking about repairs and how to figure them up, right? Um, yes. Okay, yeah, what's that, the best I did way answer. To figure out. I did answer. Okay, so um, this is another question on Instagram. E A W O F M asks, um, "What's your best intro line response to a live return call from a seller when you don't know the exact address?" they're calling you back about because you did a bulk marketing campaign. I guess this is kind of the same question as the other question um, we just had on YouTube. Yeah, it's the same, you just, same question. You just ask. I yeah, mean, answer, yeah. Just, just ask for the address. Yeah. Um, Money Making Dion on Instagram asks, can I go to the courthouse to get a list of absentee home by homeowners? Um, in most cases, uh, well, it's just going to depend on how they have their uh, information for. How to refresh it again? Okay. Do, do the search uh, show. Do uh, flip man show uh, right there. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's just going to depend on how uh, that county has their free information system set up. Some of them may, yeah, just click on the link. Yeah. Click on the link. Uh, some of them may have it. Okay, don't worry about it. It's, can it, they it, see it, you though? Is it recording? Yeah, they, they can see me over here. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. Think, I think we're good over here. Let me see, let me make sure. Yeah, we're good over here. All right, so um, yeah, you, you uh, it just depends on how they have their system set up and what's available. To the public in most cases no they don't just have it set up that way but you know you have to check you have to just check with the county and see if they you could just print off a list of absentee owners you may be fortunate and it's free or a minimum cost okay um instagram question um m-u-l-a-m-v-t-t-e-r-s I, I don't know how to read that so i just spelled it asks can any debt get transferred to the buyer or are these um cer or are there certain debts um that the seller must take care of? Um in most cases the, the debt um is taken care of as I mentioned earlier at closing, you know, un any unpaid liens, taxes, or mortgages. You know, it just has to make sense for you. Normally those debts have to be less than the price that works for you in most cases. Most sellers are not going to come to the closing table, you know, with money. So, so guys, we got show number 18 in. We really appreciate uh, Oxiana for stepping in last minute. You just don't know how last minute this was or whatever. We have some inclement weather here. So Adria has to travel a little bit to get here. And so we were glad she was able to spend some time here with us. And, but before I go, I want to mention again, the uh, Flip Masterclass, just go to flipmasterclass.com. It'll also be in the description of this particular video. Uh, you can also access it through my bio at, on Instagram and on my Facebook page, Flipman, and the uh, Wholesaling Real Estate with the Flipman group. You can access it there also. So boom, I really appreciate everyone showing up this week. And as we always like to say, thanks. And we will see you guys on the flip side.